How are you doing, Robin? I'm fine. Yeah, thanks ever so much, everybody, for watching recently and sending me some questions, especially on the cladding video. Have a little look around and we'll just give you a little bit of a tour. So you can see that we are getting through our second fix. We've got our doors hung, we've got all of our architraves, most of our skirtings on. We're ready for the kitchen and the flooring to go in. So all you see on the walls, this is just all first coated using a really good paint by um, Hanford and Green. We did all the ceilings in their paint as well. It's fantastic for covering. It's just a professional paint, check it out. Also, this is where we have our little workshop on site. Got a few chop saws, table saws set up and everything we're using dust extraction because I don't want much dust in here. So all of the doors are walnut and there are some here which are unfinished oak. These are also from XL Joinery, exactly the same. They're the Rowena. And the reason why these are unfinished and they're in oak is because we're going to paint these. So we didn't want to paint over a pre-finished walnut one because I think it has kind of a wax on it. So you'd have to clean all that back. Um, and oak paints particularly well, you get a bit of life coming through it, especially with eggshell. So you're going to read the grain difference, which I think is really important with this style. So actually, while we're here, come on through. I don't particularly like water softeners. Whenever I turn up to someone's place and they've got one of these big water softeners that takes all the salt, there's heaps of salt everywhere, bags of salt everywhere. You've got to be pretty um, good at maintaining it and keeping it up to date. This is a different kind of device and it's a whole house treatment. So our 28 mil main comes through it and goes back through. I've bypassed the summer house because I'll have a separate one in the summer house. I didn't want to restrict the flow at all. And what this will do, it means that it takes all of the scale out of the system. It doesn't soften the water, but the water is pretty soft anyway. It takes all of that scale out. You don't get the smears on the showers. It's fairly uh, inexpensive. This is a 28 mil one. You can get like a, a 15 mil and you can get a 22 mil and this is 28 because we've got a 28 main coming in. So we don't want to reduce the pressure. But yeah, so that's a nice, neat, compact unit. The MVHR unit, all commissioned, it's up and running. Um, we haven't got it switched on until we've finished completely with all of the dust. If we're making any more dust, a little bit of rubbing down, that sort of stuff. What you don't want to do is fill the filter up with that building dust. You want to keep everything hoovered and clean before you switch it on. Been very fortunate that the humidity in the building has remained amazing. It's around about 50%, which is pretty much ideal. All this will do is maintain that humidity and ventilation. This is for the cats. The one I wanted to get is by an Austrian firm and it's for passive houses and there's only one of its kind. I mean, it's a really amazing sort of bit of kit, but they were 1,500 pounds. Uh, I mean, that, that door there was probably not even 1,500 pounds. So I thought to myself, what is out there? This is, I think it's an American product, it's called PetSafe. I got it from Amazon, um, around about 100 pounds, but it's pretty good. So the inside door and the outside door are exactly the same, magnetic, gasketed, and it's pretty draft free. Let's hope them little cats use it. So the kitchen's being made at the moment, all the panels are being made, and then I'm gonna bring it all here, put it all together. It's at cut rights at the moment. You've heard me talk about cut rights. They make my door linings, they make my shelves, they make pretty much everything. They made the boiler room. So they don't know what they're making because all they do is cut panels and edge panels. But if you can remember the inside of my boiler room, I've got an egger product. So it's an egger material and it's amazing. It just, um, the reason I use this nice dark material is I wanted it to look pretty contrasting against the copper and the chrome and everything else. Also, you can't really read a pencil mark if the plumber's put a little mark or the sparky's put a little mark, it'll wipe off and you can't really see that. There's the vacuum system, that's all up and running and commissioned now. So that will work if I plug the hose in. That's also somewhere where you can plug the hose in as well. Boiler, all again up and running, commissioned. Mega flow. Listen, listen to this. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. Bathroom in brush brass. Um, we just have the silicon to put in and a vanity unit that I'm making. And so this is ready to rock. Bit more grousing on the marble. 
Tyler's done an excellent job. He's had to do herringbone, so he's had to cut all these individual pieces. The floor is also herringbone. It's all covered up. Um, so it's a little bit of a job when you're using uh, marble, but what they did do is they wrap the cuts around the corner. So that tile is that tile, that tile is that tile. And um, I'm particularly grateful that the guys took a lot of care over doing the job. Um, that means a lot to me. What was the name of the tilers? And they, the guy's name's Alex. And so I'll leave a little link for him um, in the description. That's probably the best thing to do. He's a really good guy. We've got all the bedrooms on this side of the house. Um, this is one which is nigh on there. So it has an um, ensuite shower room. <coughs> we have a glass screen which runs out here and then a recessed wall cabinet. Um, and just a very simple vanity type unit. And our um, abacus toilets and fr frames, which are really particularly nice. And these are um, a screw fix type towel rail. We are just putting together some wardrobes in this room as well. We started these uh, yesterday. This is also manufactured for me. So I design the boxes and then I choose the material. This is a, an, an Egger product as well. It's like a, a linen type finish, really nice for cupboards, especially the linen because you've got clothes in there and that sort of stuff, it sort of, sort of works really well. And then we've got this high gloss. This is where we probably put shoes because it's quite nice and dry and warm. And I think that's quite nice. So this will be wrapped out for shoes. I'll put a panel over here, which is easily removable, obviously. This is a cut rights product. They produce all these panels, drilling, they do everything, even all the hinge holes. Oh, so the blums are all done. Everything is done. The drawer runner holes are done. Um, it's a way, you know, if I was making this out of say an MDF and then it was going to be painted, let's do a little cost analysis. So I'd have to buy all the material in. I'd have to set myself up with my rail saws and be really accurate to get this quality of finish. I'd be using, it would probably take me a couple of days to make all these panels, cut all these panels. Then I've got to put them together, which is probably gonna take longer than putting these ones together because they're drilled and downed already, so just bang them together. Then the paint has got to come along and paint them, or if it's oak faced, for example, you will get them polished. And it's actually, much more expensive that way than me going to cut rights, paying for this premium product. Egger is a really nice product. And this material, they'll produce it all. They edge everything, everything's edged, so it's perfect. Gets on site and it took us, we didn't, we made the base up, which is just 25 mil MDF. We knocked all of these boxes up in a couple of three hours, slotted them all in and the labour time on site is so much less. There's no painting to do. There's no cutting to do. It's just easy. So I'd recommend to any tradesman out there who's making their own cabinets, think outside the box. Think, can I outsource the cutting of my panels? And yes, you can. And I've been doing it for probably 10 years since I've known Tom at Cut Rights. And it just means it frees you up to do all the other stuff as well. Mm. I noticed you've got a plie, you've got a ballet bar there. Yes. Yeah, so give us a quick demonstration of your plie, will you? My plie, well, I mean, uh, my daughter has taught me all the positions, first, second, third, correct me if I'm wrong, and then basically she comes in here and she just wafts her leg up like that and it's just incredible and she's shorter than me. But um, this on, is- let's see you do it, go on. Oh, so come on. Oh, oh, there you go. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh, that's what being 50, how about that? That's what being 50 is, isn't it? I know, yeah. Hold on. You do that every day, now. stretch every day. Yeah. So, yeah, this, is, this was just something we just put up for a bit of fun because she'll have a ballet bar in the studio eventually when mm. she will do her pre practice. So this is like the master bedroom. And this is, this will all be wardrobes in here, like a like a dresser thing and a cupboards and a few shelves and that sort of stuff. And then there's the ensuite for this bedroom. Um, similar sort of scenario: shower, glass screen, cabinet, vanity unit. I'll make. Um, and these are really nice tiles as well. Quite a lot of light to them. A lot of colour. Mm. 
But again, the guys have done a really nice job of taking the tile around the corner in its respective, you know, this, this is what you want. This is a professional tiling job, guys. This is the difference. I mean, a lot of people can tile nice and flat and true and plumb. But when you look at this and you see that that tile's wrapped around the corner and the setting out in here, I was particularly interested in them. I wanted two and I wanted two. And it meant that when they set this wall out because they wrapped that one round, it gave us a small cut. And actually normally you wouldn't want a small cut like that. But in this instance, when you're laying a material in a fashion which you're wrapping and you're matching, that's totally acceptable. And in fact, it looks really nice, the fact that you've got the variation and then it repeats. So the guys have you know, excelled themselves and we've got like a marble mosaic floor. They took a lot of care over that as well. Anyone out there who's doing this kind of work, it's really important to find the right people, the right tradesmen who can, who just don't want to come in and smash it all out and get it all done and go, yeah, well, that's what we do, you know. You want people who are going to take a bit of care and a bit of time over something really, especially when you spend so long building something, spend so much money on concrete, so much money on groundwork, and then you fall at the last hurdle because money's a bit tight and you're trying to find a tiler who's less than the one who's given you a price for. It's just, it's about quality. Check the work out, go and see what they've done and choose them on that basis. So there's a brief tour of the capable build where we're at now. You can see we're getting pretty close now. I'm, yes, I'm a bit tired. People have been pointing that out to me, but it's a seven day week journey for me. Come back and check us out soon. Thanks for watching us. Please subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and support the skill builder journey.